It's time for another episode of Let's Talk Business South Carolina, featuring industry outlooks, panel discussions on trending topics, and interviews with business executives, community leaders, and government officials. And now, coming to you from the Drum Creative Studio, here's your host, longtime South Carolina business publisher, Rick Jenkins. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Business South Carolina, where we are up to episode number 39. I'm your host, Rick Jenkins, and as always, we're coming to you from the Drum Creative Studios. In our feature segment today, I'll be talking to James and Carlo White. James and Carlo are, are entrepreneurs extraordinaire. These two guys both run their own businesses. James is the president of James White Enterprises, and Carlo, the president of WH Trucking, plus they are actively involved in the community and other ways as well. Their story is as impressive as it is inspiring. We'll also talk to Scott Frierson. He's the president of the Southern Bank, and he has been the brother's financial partner for many years as they have been on their entrepreneurial journey. James and Carlo, as well as Scott, will share their story and provide plenty of insight and advice for business owners as well as those considering taking the plunge themselves. But before we get to all that, it's time for one of my favorite segments on the show, and that is an executive you should know brought to our friends, brought to you by our friends at Greenville Technical College. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back for that segment. Be back in 60 seconds. I bet you want a website that drums up business. You see, every business wants to have an effective online presence that helps their business grow. We guide you through our process that will drive results by clarifying your message with a beautiful design that's strategically optimized for search. Stop wasting your time and money on an ineffective website and let us help you drum up business by designing a website that speaks to your audience and delivers results. Welcome back everyone to Let's Talk Business South Carolina and as I told you at the beginning, it is now time for one of my favorite uh, segments on the show that we do called An Executive You Should Know. And as always, this segment is brought to you by Greenville Technical College. Greenville Tech, I don't know if you know this or not, but they have over a hundred academic programs that students can uh, participate in. They put workers in our manufacturing facilities, they put teachers, uh, or excuse me, nurses in our hospitals, and they also offer a wide variety of corporate executive training for upskilling and that type of thing. If you're interested in continuing a career, uh, those guys can always assist. And they make it possible, as I say, for me and you to meet a guy just like this. This is Eric Bedingfield. He is the Assistant Vice President of Governmental Affairs at Greenville Tech. Eric, well, thanks for having me. It is good to have you, pal. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, like I say, that this is a time I get to meet folks I don't always know, and you and I did not know each other until a few minutes ago, so it's a pleasure. Thank you. Let's talk about you for a second, and I want to get into what you do. Uh, but you're from uh, the Greenville area, right? Yes, sir. Born and raised. Born and raised. You're a Greenville boy. Um, we'll get to your job in a second, but you um, have experience as a as a a lawman, so to speak. You were uh, on the Greenville uh, County Council yes, sir. for four years, and you were a member of the South Carolina House of Representatives as a lawmaker for about a dozen years, correct? That's correct. Tell us about your time there. Enjoyed both. Um, ran for county council in the uh, early 2000s, uh, served from 2000 to 2006. Um, that was a, um, a great time in, in Greenville. Um, left uh, county council, ran for the house in 2006, and um, began my service there in 2007, and left in 2018. Um, I was chairman of the House Regulations Committee while I was there, served on a bunch of other committees, uh, had the pleasure of chairing the House Opioid um, Epidemic Study Committee, um, and it was a pleasure. Right. Um, I bet it opened your eyes a little bit. Uh, very much opened my eyes. Yeah, it made you look at things a little differently, probably. Well, it makes you uh, study a little more. Uh -huh. uh, it makes you be a little bit more involved and more aware. Yeah. More aware. Yeah. Correct. Understood. Now, did uh, this job as a lawmaker in some way directly lead to your job, which again, Assistant VP of Governmental Affairs at Greenville Tech, did, they, did that lead into that in some fashion? I'm, I'm sure it probably did to a certain extent. Um, I also served at the federal level. Um, uh, with the congressman's office as a deputy chief of staff for a number of years. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure my right. government experience at the local, state, and federal level played into this new role. Yeah. 
So tell us about this role. What do you do? Uh, I basically manage the college's relationships with government, be it local, state, or federal. Um, I'm involved in uh, monitoring things that happen at all of those levels to make sure that things are good for Greenville Tech when it comes to new laws or regulations or things of that nature. Um, stay pretty involved in the budget process, trying to make sure Greenville Tech is uh, well represented when it comes to those things. And um, it's been a pleasure. I'm doing that work. You, you also have a touching uh, personal story, Eric, that we discussed just briefly before we came on the air. And I want to touch on that for a second. You started the Greenville Technical College Center for Collegiate Recovery. I had not heard of that before. Tell us about it. Yeah, so uh, Collegiate Recovery is designed as a program uh, to keep college-level students who um, know that they are have an addictive nature or are inactive or, um, um, you know, in their clean time. Our goal is to just simply take those students and keep them involved at college, aware of the things that are happening uh, within their own classes and their own um, programs uh, so that they persist and graduate. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's been good to watch them at a peer level uh, work with one another to, for the betterment of each other. Um, it's been a great program. Brable Tech's the only two-year college I know of in South Carolina that offers such a program to students. Um, the programs do exist at quite a number of four-year colleges. Um, we've had some great mentors. We started our program by visiting Kennesaw State University, and they were kind of the prime uh, person at the time or entity uh, involved in collegiate recovery. So it's been my, my son was also that passed away. was also a student at Greenville Tech. Uh, he got a CDL from Greenville Tech, and um, um, so our goal was just Let's see what we can do to help this particular subset of students persist and graduate. Right. And uh, your son, um, sorry to hear it, but we're, we're about eight years or so removed from that. Mm -hmm. uh, your son uh, was a victim of uh, the opioid crisis, as you had mentioned to me before. Yes, sir. And that led directly into you wanting uh, to make this a part of, of what you do in your life. Yeah, the last couple of years of my son's uh, clean time in life, uh, he too was very involved in trying to help others uh, through various organizations and I felt like um, starting a program like this and, and helping other students would um, help me to continue his legacy. Understood. Uh, that's great work. Um, you should be proud of that work. Uh, so you work at Greenville Tech but you also got your start at Greenville Tech as a young man. Tell me about that. That's correct. Um, so I was probably one of the college's first uh, tech scholars, they call them. Um, I, I took mechanical engineering technology at Granville Tech in the late 80s while also being employed by Michelin Tire Corporation and Michelin would pay for the school and for me to work a few hours a week and um, it was an extremely beneficial program and I really credit Granville Tech with with about everything uh, that's happened to me in life. Um, I, you know, the first part of my work life was in the industry. That was a direct parlay from Greenville Tech. And as I moved on in life, the skills I gained at Greenville Tech, I found were good no matter what I was doing. Um, I had great teachers, great professors. Um, if you're ready to go to work, Greenville Tech's a place for you. You can't beat that, Eric. I appreciate you being here, and thank you for sharing your story. Happy to, sir. Thank you. Folks, that's Eric Benningfield. He is the Assistant Vice President of Governmental Affairs. Had to make sure I got it right. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in about 60 seconds uh, with uh, another uh, interview segment here on Let's Talk Business South Carolina. Be right back. I bet you want a website that drums up business. You see, every business wants to have an effective online presence that helps their business grow. We guide you through our process that will drive results by clarifying your message with a beautiful design that's strategically optimized for search. Stop wasting your time and money on an ineffective website and let us help you drum up business by designing a website that speaks to your audience and delivers results. Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk Business South Carolina. I'm your host Rick Jenkins. Appreciate you guys being here and now it is time for our feature segment. I did not know these two guys to my right until they walked in uh, to the studio here just a little bit ago. 
However, I knew of them. I had heard of them. I knew of their reputation, and uh, I knew that they were entrepreneurs in our upstate community and had been uh, for quite some time. Their reputation, as I say, precedes them. Uh, and they have a real entrepreneurial spirit, which is the way I wanted to frame our conversation today uh, because I love talking to folks who go off and do their own thing. Folks, I want to introduce you to James White Jr. He is the president of James White Enterprises and also his brother, Carlo uh, White. He is the president of WH Logistics Group. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to have you here. Yes, it's good to have you here. And uh, as I said, you know, before we came on the air, Carlo, I was telling you that I met you extremely briefly some time ago at a networking event years ago. And as I said to you then, the only reason I remember you is because you were with your wife, Nika White, who I just absolutely love. Nika's been on the show with us before. Extremely uh, intelligent, impressive executive. And uh, so I, re I think you were with her that day. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, no, you, you were. So, but we met briefly, you wouldn't remember that. But I wasn't lying, I do know both of you by reputation, and it's good to have you here. Great to be here. You guys are from here. Uh, this is home, born and raised, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but dad moved you all here, a gener or dad moved here a generation ago from somewhere else. Is Asheville, that right? North Carolina. Asheville? Asheville, North Carolina. Okay, and what brought your dad down here from Asheville? <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he and my mom, they moved here. Um, this is... Uh, late 70s, mid to late 70s, and uh, he was pursuing a dream to start a company. Uh, so right. he started a masonry company and moved right. to South Carolina to do it. So uh, you all got the entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial bug from your father, which I want to explore that here in a minute, but uh, let's get into your two companies first. And so, Carlo, we'll start with you. WH Logistics Group, tell me about it. Yes. WH Logistics Group is a, a full service logistics group. Our mission there is to create opportunities by profitably managing our clients freight safely, securely, and satisfactorily. And we do that with three stakeholders in mind. The colleague experience first, the colleague in mind uh, making sure that they're creating opportunities for them and that they're profitable. Our clients, we want to create more opportunity for our clients, make sure they're profitable. We do a safe, secure, satisfactory, and then our community. So our colleague, client, and community is who we do what we do for. And so that's right. our focus. Well said. So you have a fleet of vehicles. Yes. Tell me how many is in your fleet? About 80, 18 wheelers. And okay. then that's our asset side. And then we also have a non-asset side. Um, the way we manage other people's freight on other people's trucks for them. I, I got it. Uh, warehousing? We do have a small warehouse, about 7,000 square feet uh, that we manage for. Actually, one of our major accounts is for Whirlpool. Got it. All right. So you're basically you're by and large a trucking company uh, contract with co with companies and of course uh, 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 independent contractors as well. Yes. Uh, about eighty in your fleet. Okay. Let's move over to you, uh, James. Uh, James White Enterprises. Mm -hmm. What is involved in that? Yeah, we like to say that we do real estate from commercial to residential. You dream it, we'll build it, like lease it, it, buy it, or sell it. One highly satisfied client at a time. Right. Got it. Well, I can't get a more precise. Uh, elevator speech than that right there. I think you you both have said those a couple times before. Good job. Uh, let's um, let's talk about uh, the entrepreneurial side here. And so let's go back to your father. Um, and, and again, I want to have this conversation, folks, because there are so many people that watch this show that are business owners, small business owners. We do a lot of shows on this type of thing. And so anytime I can get folks on the show to tell their story, to give some advice and some insight, I'm all for it, and I know that a lot of our viewers and our listeners are as well. So that's that's why I'm going down this road. So your father, uh, James, let's start with you. Tell me, uh, you said a masonry business, and uh, why did he decide, I better do that in Greenville as opposed to Asheville? Well, he was working with a partner in Asheville, um, and, um, you know, he decided that he would move to South Carolina and yeah. go out on his own. I see. I'm assuming he was leaving his partner in North Carolina to run the North Carolina end. Um, but he came here, and the interesting thing is, for Carl and I, I'm the oldest um, and the better looking of the two. <laughs> you know, the, the camera. But um, when 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 we wanted, um, you know, Dad, I want some Jordans, or I want I want the new whatever. It was not we're going to the mall to get it. It was. Um, I'm going to work Saturday. I'm not waking you up, and uh, if you want to, you want to want something. You got to go work for it. And so 
I, we would literally sleep as close to the hall as possible so that we would hear him moving around 6.30 in the morning. And uh, we, we grew up on construction sites. Right. Yeah. I got it. Uh, he instilled that work ethic in Absolutely. you guys from a very young age. Absolutely. So, yeah, I got it. So uh, when you all were young, did you have uh, regular jobs or did you have jobs with dad or did you, uh, how did you, how did you make a buck? We never had a regular job. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's always um, was working for dad and um, James started first and then when I got of age, um, I started working with him. My dad was a masonry and if you know anything about masonry, most masons have um, uh, mortar mix machines yeah. that mix the mortar mix. He never had a machine. You're looking at his machine right here. Uh, um, so we always mix our mud in the wheelbarrow, and um, he always paid yeah, well too. Goodness as well. Right. Yeah, <laughs> but he always paid well. I was telling them the other day we just went on a mission trip with our dad. And I was and we were doing construction, and I was like, I remember back. I don't know, as James said, eighties, nineties. We were. I was making fifty dollars a day to go work with my dad, and that was some serious money. Yeah. And so no, I, I couldn't afford to go to McDonald's. Right. I go out there work hard, and my dad would pay us, and um, and we always I always did well with it. Yeah, I mean back then I think you probably made what minimum wage is four dollars an hour. Yeah, every something day, like you that. Know, something like that. So yeah, you were doing okay. Dad doing took good. care of. He took care of. That's right. And uh, so you all you all get out of school and you go off to college. Now, one of you went to uh, faith based college, Car uh, James mm -hmm. uh, Beacon. Mm -hmm. Is that do I remember that correct? You did. Yeah. And Carla, where did you go? Clemson. Yeah, that's right. I remember you went to Columbus. Those Tigers. Well, uh, there you go. And where where is Beacon? Columbus, Georgia. And uh, so I, I didn't I didn't go straight into school. My wife and I we did life all the way backwards. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> we we met in high school, and uh, we we got out. We moved in together. We had kids and everything. And then somewhere part of the way in there, we realized I think we're gonna need an education at some point. Right. And so uh, we we went back to school after having kids and and and, and jobs and everything, totally backwards. Right. I wouldn't advise that to anyone okay. listening yeah. uh, to go that route, but we are we, we made it though. Um, yeah, yeah. You made it happen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So uh, let's see. One of you started in the or maybe not started, but dabbled in the insurance business. That's me. Carlo, you dabbled in the insurance business for a little more than a decade, if I remember That's right. right. What led you into that? Actually, it's funny that you ask. Going back to my dad, it was that that seed of entrepreneurial spirit that my dad put it put in me. That actually, it, when you're a true entrepreneur, you're like a lion in a cage when you're when you're not doing it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I um, left the military in um, Air Force, Air Force, Air Force officer in 2022. Um, Started at Wells Fargo, Wachovia at the time, and while I was there, to be honest with you, and I know that some of my banker friends might be listening, I was miserable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because ultimately, one thing I understood about my dad, my dad worked from sun up to sun down, but he never complained, and I eventually realized it's because he was building something for himself. Yes. And so, although I was working, I always had this hunger to go build something for myself. And I had a client that um, I gave a loan to and I said, man, I'm envious of you. And she said, why? I said, because I would like to be on that side of the desk. And she called me one day, it was about a year later, she called me, she said, you ready to get on this side of the desk? And she said, there's an opportunity at Nationwide, um, you need to look into it to be perfect for you. I called, I looked into it, and the rest is history. I left Wachovia, went full time into Nationwide, built it, and sold it eventually. Right. Was that your first executive position? Yes, when yes, when you were so executive, yes. Right. How about you? What was your first? Doing what I'm doing now. <laughs> I am. I am. You went I, right at it. Well, yeah. Well, I'm a, again. You you mentioned um, Bible college, um, and I'm a bivocational pastor. So I tell people all the time, I build quality people on the weekend, quality builders during the week. Um, so you know that uh, that is that is sort of. The essence of who I am and what drives me in doing business. I believe that uh, if you give people a solid foundation, they can build a quality, quality life. If you give a house a quality foundation, it's a quality house. So, so foundation is everything for me, and that's sort of where I've been for the last uh, 25, 30 years. Church, ministry, and, uh, and, and building uh, homes. Well, you know, you guys would not, uh, your faith would not be as important as it is to you, not only personally, but 
obviously uh, in, in your working relationship or your working business too because you know, we're going to talk about your foundation in a sec. If it weren't for the fact, I'm assuming that mom and dad uh, brought you up in a faith-based household. Yes, That's true. That's true. Uh, our, our mom and dad did. Now, it's interesting because our mom and dad did eventually divorce. And it, um, it was tough on me to wrap my head around because they were, they were my heroes. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to be like anyone outside my house, like my mom and dad. My, dad, my dad's a pastor and a brick mason. I'm a pastor and a home builder, so I, I was following in their steps. So there was some, there was a season right there when they um, couldn't make it that I, I personally couldn't make sense of it um, and um, spent some time trying to find myself. Thank God I did. Uh, I had like the problem to solve, uh, made my way back to where I belong and uh, been the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah. Let's talk about your foundation, Carl. Yes, sir. Uh, Nika and Carlo White uh, Foundation. Is, is that what it's called? It is. Tell me about uh, what's the mission. Well, we are we are fueled by the, these pillars: Christ, commerce, and community. The reason why we're fueled by Christ is because our goal is to give hope to to those that um, have been um, been in some tough situations. And so, the greatest hope in all the world is the love of Jesus Christ. Um, that motivates us. He's used our dad and everything and our circumstances to business. Business has granted us opportunity that, I mean, we're doing so much better than we deserve. And so we really want to um, promote com um, commerce and business and, and um, depressed communities because we really feel like it's an accelerant to lift people up. And then community, the way we describe community is common unity, um, where we build this common unity amongst people who understand we all have been blessed to be a blessing and it's no matter it's not just about your income level if you're here and you're able body and you have been blessed and we can be a blessing to someone else so we're just trying to build this community of people that believe that and that's kind of our mission is to do that i love it common unity i will not forget that gentlemen i appreciate it when we come back, we'll be joined. Uh, James is going to remain with us, uh, uh, but we'll be joined by Scott Frierson. Scott is the president at the Southern Bank, and uh, Scott has been a financial partner of the brothers for many, many years. And uh, I know you're going into a business of your own. You always need that financial partner to help show you the way sometimes. So we're going to have that conversation, get a little, get a little more advice on uh, uh, entrepreneurism uh, for folks who are uh, going to do it on their own. We're going to do that in a second. Double on. Get back. I bet you want a website that drums up business. You see, every business wants to have an effective online presence that helps their business grow. We guide you through our process that will drive results by clarifying your message with a beautiful design that's strategically optimized for search. Stop wasting your time and money on an ineffective website and let us help you drum up business by designing a website that speaks to your audience and delivers results. Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Talk Business South Carolina. We're continuing the conversation uh, and I've been uh, joined uh, by the White Brothers, uh, Carlo and James, and Carlo uh, has has taken a step off the studio and we're, now we're joined by Scott Frierson. Scott, is the president at the Southern Bank and of course James uh, White has remained with us and we are talking about as you can see on the screen behind me that entrepreneurial spirit that has driven the, uh, the White Brothers to, uh, to do what they have done in their life and I brought Scott here uh, because I want to have the conversation anytime you're starting a business folks you know you got to have a financial partner and sometimes you need a little more capital than other times right and so it's always important that you have a banking partner and that that partner can also be a friend of sorts to help give you advice and that kind of thing. And I believe that's the type of relationship we're talking here with uh, the White Brothers and and, uh, and Scott. So enough of that, Scott, welcome in. Thank you, glad to be here. It's good to have you here. So uh, really quick, uh, you are with the Southern Bank and if I remember right, you've only been there a few years, but you have been a banking executive in the upstate of South Carolina for quite some time, right? My entire career, yes. yes. I moved to Greenville in 1985. Yeah. At uh, going to Clemson University, I majored in uh, financial management. Right. And uh, came to work for uh, the Red CNS Bank, uh, right. right downtown Greenville. Right. And stayed there. And then um, at that time, uh, that was in yeah 1988. Uh, there was a local bank formed at that time called Carolina First Bank. Yeah. Stayed there 22 years. That's right. 
and uh, then worked for a couple other banks, and then we formed the Southern Bank in November 2020. So that's the only career I've had since college. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. You know, the banking industry. My gosh, how um, how competitive that industry is. There's probably about 40 banks or so just in the upstate alone of South Carolina, so it's extremely competitive. James, you found this guy, but not four years ago when he was uh, went to the Southern Bank. You knew him a long time, That's right. and you followed him around a little bit. How long have you been doing business with this guy? Been the better part of two decades between yeah. myself and uh, my, uh, my brother Carlo, and right. um, we have found Scott to be, uh, it, it was important for us. I tell people all the time, listen, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, I like to think about it in sports terms, you got to be able to play ball. All right, and so we took the word ball and created an acrostic out of it. To be, you need a banker. Now, I'm not talking about a teller that knows your name. You need a banker. Right. Um, so we knew that early on. We developed relationships with individuals who could make decisions um, as it relates to our banking needs. You need an accountant. You need someone to keep your books. You need a good lawyer because you never know. <laughs> and then, um, and then you need to hire leaders. Though you need to be, you need to be comfortable knowing what you don't know, and make sure you surround yourself with people who know what you don't know. Right. So. For us, playing business, um, doing business, is about being able to play ball, and that first, the first letter in that is that banking relationship, and we found that uh, in in Scott and uh, the Southern Bank at this point. All right. So you've known these guys a long time. Yes, sir. And I'm, I'm assuming it's probably good to have clients come in uh, that you know are going to be hard workers, and if you just listen to these guys' story, you could probably have banked on that. No, no pun intended. Uh, but it's good to good to find that that kind of a client. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we know that people bank with people, and uh, you know, we keep it simple. We're a local community bank, and to us, uh, the character is huge. Yeah. And it also helps to have a 20-year relationship that you have past history with. Right. And you know, the past is an indicator of the future, so yeah. um, these guys are the right people, they're great people, uh, they've done everything they said they were going to do, they've been very loyal. Um, and we've been able to help them, members of their family, uh, people in their businesses, because um, we, we provide personal banking, business banking, and mortgage banking. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what we provide fits into both of what they provide and, and other entrepreneurs as sure. well. Well, let's, let's stick with entrepreneurs here for a second. Uh, we have had uh, a few shows uh, where uh, we have small business owners on and we talk about the importance of finding that good financial partner. Uh, how about some advice for folks who are looking to go into uh, business for themselves and they're thinking they might need some capital? What are the types of things they need to be considering? Well, I, I think you need to find um, the right banker because I think that the person is helpful. Um, you know, personal credit and the way you handle your credit and what we like to say financial literacy is very important. And sometimes you have to get started. Um, you know, we talk to a lot of people that they may be a year to two years out before they actually borrow money or need the money, but you know we're an advisor or a consultant that helps them get started. Um, pretty much everything you do today, people are going to look at a credit report, either a soft pull or a hard pull. Um, and that's if you're renting an apartment, getting your power turned on or going to the bank to borrow money. Um, so that's, again, that will show a behavior and a pattern how you handle that. Uh, savings. Um, how you manage your personal situation is helpful, um, and, and that's hard. I mean, especially in the times we're in today where things are expensive and, um, you know, people are, are, are struggling somewhat in, in that, but, um, um, and a business plan, and we can help with the business plan um, because, you know, you, a lot of people have a vision and a dream, but they don't know how to actually employ or connect the dots. Um, and then another thing that we look at is you mentioned capital. There's all kinds of ways of it in capital, um, whether it's you know you know silent partners or, or public or the like. Um, but you you got to have two things. You got to have capital to get started, and you have to have capital to stay open. And uh, we're going to look at both of those because you know if you put every penny you have to open the doors, you're probably not going to stay open very long because you're going to have something unexpected. And if you don't have a safety net or a plan or a business partner, um, it becomes very challenging. Yeah, things are a little different than they were a generation or so ago, James, back when our dads uh, were younger doing their own thing. A lot of times uh, they didn't necessarily want to use a bank, you know. Uh, we're going to do this, you know, we're, gonna do, we're not going to borrow money. 
right? Now I don't know if your dad was like that or not, but I, you know, I know my dad. We pay cash for anything unless, if you know, right. uh, if at all possible, right? right? But at some point, you realize you and your brother that you got to have some capital to if if you want to get bigger. That's right. That's right. So, um, yeah, our dad's old fashioned. He uh, <laughs> he uh, he kept it small and manageable, and uh, but we we've always had quote vision to scale and so we know that in order to scale you're gonna need partners outside of your personal checking account. So um yeah, exactly. that 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 made this relationship um important. What is it that people should uh look for? I ask you the same thing that I you know that I just asked Scott. What is it that folks should look for as they're starting their own and they're out there and they're interviewing potential financial partners? What's the most important thing? Well, for us, it, it was finding a banker who could see beyond just the business, that could see you and and listen to you. We're, we're building a community together, and um, so that's important for us. I do, we, we're building inside of communities that Southern Bank has a vested interest in, just like we do. And so for us, in building a relationship, it was important to build it with a banking partner who had a vested interest in that community that we were building. I love it. I'll get you guys both out of here on this. Uh, Scott, uh, if you got uh, some advice for anyone who's getting ready uh, to take that plunge, uh, give me a piece of advice for I would say, um, you know, make sure you have your plan together, have your facts together. Uh, we're here to help you. We understand that you won't have all the answers. Um, I think, uh, you know, James said earlier, you got to have good business partners. You know, you need a good attorney, you need a good CPA, you need a good banker, a good insurance person, maybe a good financial planner. Build a team of folks that are not as strong as you are in your line of business and rely on them and then, you know, create your team because I think the team will help you, help you get there quicker than you will by yourself. Right, right. Good advice. James, yeah. how about you? No, the same. I'm, I'm about, about the ball. You need a banker, you need an account, you need a lawyer, you need leaders around you. You build that, you play ball, and uh, you build something that you can be proud of. I love it. Play ball and build something you're going to be proud of. Folks, uh, well, thank you. Thank you both for being here, and thanks to Carla, thank you uh, for who was yeah, here thank earlier. You. Uh, you guys are really welcome. I really enjoyed that conversation, folks. Uh, that is, uh, concludes another episode of Let's Talk Business South Carolina. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next time.